And we are back on Steel and Vance and Linda. It is time to continue our conversation about what has been an incredibly busy week for the new Premier of British Columbia. I know. I had to get my pen out. I was like, oh, wait, he's announced something else. Good grief. Uh, we have thoughts. We've expressed some, and we're going to continue to do it throughout the show. But our next guest has a lot of thoughts about some of these big announcements over the past week or so. Liberal leader Kevin Falcon is joining us now from the B.C. legislature. Thank you so much for joining us on Steel and Vance. Well, thanks very much for having me, Jody and Linda. It's hard to know even where to start, really, but uh, should we go with crime? What yes. did you make of the almost quarter billion dollar announcement yesterday to hire a bunch more RCMP officers? Well, obviously, I will always applaud uh, when we make a decision to spend money to support more policing. Uh, that is so I start out by saying good. The problem I have, though, is this. Uh, we as an opposition have been calling for more of this, uh, more investment in filling those empty policing positions throughout the province for four years. And so that decision could have been made four years ago, three years ago, a year ago, six months ago, three months ago. I'm glad they made it today. But frankly, making decisions like this and announcements like this when you're under pressure because of what everyone's seeing happening in the streets and communities is not necessarily the best way to to do public policy because we know it's going to take at least 18 months to two years before we see any of those police actually appear mm -hmm. because they've got to be identified. They've got to go be trained at depot back uh, in the West Coast and then they've got to come out to BC. So good step in the right direction. But again, so much later than necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's been a lot of the reaction, frankly, from both files that we wanted to really dig in with you here in terms of we, you know, talking about the crime piece and also about the housing piece, hearing some of the announcements by Premier Eby, it has been like, well, why did this not happen six months ago, when a year and a half ago? Minister, when you were the Attorney General. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly right. And look, I, you know, I've sort of come around to the conclusion in my own mind that there's a pattern here that uh, concerns me. The pattern is that when the government gets in trouble or feels like they're you know, getting beat up on a certain issue, whether it's housing, whether it's crime, whether it's health care, what they always do is roll out some kind of announcement. But I, you know, what I've learned in both the private sector and the public sector, it's not about making announcements, it's about getting results. And the problem is the results we're getting today are not good in all three of those areas. So let's look at housing for a minute. So this government's been responsible for housing uh, for over five years. They're in their second term. They got elected on an affordability promise saying they were going to make housing more affordable. They added a whole bunch of new cost to housing, a whole blizzard of new taxes that they brought on board. And they said this was going to get us to a more affordable housing. So how are we doing? Well, we now have the distinction in British Columbia of having the highest housing prices in North America, third highest on the planet. We now have, after five years of this government, well into their second term, we now have the highest rents in Canada right here in British Columbia. And we've got a government that promised 114,000 new affordable homes within 10 years. We're halfway through that 10-year commitment they made. And we've got exactly 9% of those homes that have actually been built. So I think that we just have to remember, ignore politicians, frankly, including myself when I become premier, about what I promise and focus on what, what I deliver. That should apply to me and it should apply to the government too. And you know what, uh, Mr. Falcon, I don't disagree with a lot of what you're saying. However, uh, it is fair to point out that when you were in government with Christy Clark as premier, that the BC Liberals sort of watched the BC housing market burn down yeah. before you moved with the foreign buyer tax. So, I mean, you do have to own a little bit of what's happening with housing prices. Would you agree? 100 uh, percent. Look, but you have to understand when I left government, so I retired from government in 2012 and uh, I was, uh, you know, finished in 2013 when my term, you know, my term as MLA ended. Um, the average house price of a townhome in Surrey was 450000 Today it's over a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So when the housing prices did start to run up, after even after they started to while I was in government, but it really started to take off, as you correctly point out, in 2015, 2016. The government of the day, Christy Clark, did bring in the foreign buyer's tax to start to deal with what was a sense that there was a lot of foreign money also driving up prices. And uh, was that enough? Probably not. But I think it's important to remember that if you're going to get elected on a platform where you're going to deliver affordability and you're going to make that kind of commitment to the public, 
then you should have something you can point to that demonstrates you've made at least incremental pro progress towards that goal. We haven't seen that. We've seen the exact opposite. And that's really all I'm trying to point out. So you did also slip in that when you're a premier, which I thought was, uh, was uh, a, a good line there. Um, if you were, when you are, if you were to become, what actionable uh, moves would you make, might you make? Because a lot of people say, well, it's easy to sit on opposition. You know, when we had premier, former premier John Horgan here, he spoke about, you know, it's much um, easier a position to say what isn't working as opposed to coming up with what might work and of course. and politicians are going to politic but if you had the the conch as it were what would you do on some of these files yeah that's a great question i thank you for that jody because i've been saying since the day i launched my leadership campaign uh, to become leader of the bc liberal party after spending 10 years in the private sector and i should point out I spent 10 years in the private sector in a senior role with a real estate development company that has built more housing over that period of time than the entire BC government has. And one of the things that I would like to point out that I think is so important for the public to understand is when the government, this current government, focused entirely on adding cost to housing, they did not do anything to deal with the lack of supply. Mm. And supply is not something you get by snapping your fingers. Supply is something you have to get by ensuring that you break down the barriers that are getting in the way of getting new supply into the marketplace. So what are those? I said right from the outset that I would bring in legislative changes to ensure that local governments are approving projects on a timely basis. I said that I would establish clear targets that are enforceable that would have incentives for local government to do the right thing by ensuring that new supply gets into the marketplace and penalties if they refuse to do so. And I also said that the province needs to do its bit because we have a whole bunch of delays that the province puts in place, whether it's through Ministry of Transportation approvals, whether it's through Ministry of Environmental approvals, uh, et cetera, that also get in the way. So there is a lot we need to be doing on the supply side. And the problem is they David Eby only started talking about that in a second term. And that's the problem. We've missed an opportunity for five years to get new supply into the marketplace. We only have about 30 seconds left, but um I asked you even as a consumer reporter many years ago about the property transfer tax of governments of all stripes have been addicted to it. And it's one of the reasons why housing is so expensive. Is it time to get rid of it or reduce it? Yes, I've said that I'm going to look at all of the costs the government imposes on housing because there are a huge amount. There's DCCs, you've got CACs, you've got property transfer tax, PSD, GST, you've got all kinds of tax. I'm going to look at all of them and make sure that we look at them through the eyes of a first-time buyer and get rid of those things that are getting in the way of first-time buyers getting into housing. Kevin Falcon, BC Liberal Leader, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And thanks so much for having me. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, it went we'll by way too on. fast. We got to have you back again soon. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. Yeah, you got to oh. open invite. Yeah. There you go. Coming up next on Steel and Bats, the World Cup in Qatar is making headlines for all the wrong reasons Indeed. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Why did FIFA choose an openly homophobic country to host the games? We don't get it. We're talking about that next.